All right. Uh, welcome to this video where I'll try to summarize the top solution, the number one first place winning solution from the Kaggle LLM competition. Uh, I think the full form was LLM science competition. In this competition team, H2 LLM studio, the name gives away, but they're sort of the team behind the legendary open source, one of the best open source projects in the LLM space won the competition and they did this in the most legendary fashion so if you're not familiar with Kaggle absolutely staying on top of the competition and then winning it is something unheard of even even to very seasoned Kagglers uh, this is one of the hardest goals and they actually did this in uh, the competition even still if you look at the team members inside uh, this team it's not as surprising because whenever you see these three people come together and they're very high ranked Kagglers from H2O, whenever you see them come together, you probably, you expect them to win. So the three people are Philip, Yahuen and Pascal. Philip is currently number one and Pascal is back on number four rank. And you can see that they stayed on the top of the leaderboard throughout the competition. So what I want to do in this video is give you all an overview of their solution and also explain the problem statement. So if you're not new to, if you're new to Kaggle or if you're new to the competition, you'll get the complete context of the competition. I'll try to give that. And then I'll give an overview of the competition. Everything is in their timestamps. Uh, check it out. Feel free to jump around. All right, let's get into it. So let me start by explaining the problem statement. Uh, the problem here was You are provided a bunch of MCQ questions. So let's say a question is, uh, what is the best drink? And now you would have a bunch of options, five precisely. Chai, coffee, beer, uh, A or C, none of these. Now, if your LLM is working as expected, it's supposed to select chai. But in the context of this competition, um, these were based on the open QA data set. And these are actually STEM questions. So think physics questions, science questions, so on and so forth. The challenge here was, uh, I'm sure all of you know, to train machine learning models, you need data. But the organizers didn't provide any data set at all. So you had to sort of come up with a creative approach to figure out uh, what data set do you want to use with your models. And then also be able to answer these effectively by doing some guesswork as to what is there inside the competition. So this was the problem statement for everyone, pretty much. Team LLM Studios solution overview would be the actually uh, used RAG along with six LLM models. The LLM models were, of course, fine-tuned using, you guessed it, uh, LLM Studio. And you can check out LLM Studio and anything I mentioned in the show notes. So they did that. And for RAG, they had used a large dump of Wikipedia related data set. So they mentioned along with model weights, their final input to Kaggle was 2.5 terabytes. So you can imagine that the data set being used was about one, one and a half terabyte, maybe along those lines. It's, it's hard to guess. So let's first understand both of these. I'll start by explaining RAG and then sort of get back into the solution. Now, if you've been paying attention, RAG has been insanely popular in this space. So the team, first of all, when they approached the competition, they tried Deberta models and the older models, but they weren't as effective. So they also settled on this RAG-based approach. What is RAG? So to understand RAG, let's understand in-context learning, ICL. This means that whenever you're working with a LLM, you can give it a few examples, and based on those examples, you can make informed decisions. So you just tell me, hey, I like chai. And based on that, I'll answer that, okay, A, chai was the right answer just a few seconds ago. But the problem then becomes most of the open source models are usually like 8K or 4K tokens in context length. And these sort of mean they can take in about 60, 7,500 characters or let's say 3,200 characters approximately as input. Now, if you had like a large Wikipedia data dump to feed into this model, that's just not feasible. So we as a community, we figured out that, hey, let's break these documents into chunks. 
So let's let's divide them into parts. Let's store them, and these can be of 384 characters or 512 characters per chunk. And then we can retrieve this when we're working with the LLM. And note that these usually have an overlap. So these aren't exclusive, but usually they have some overlap happening. This could be chunk one, chunk two, chunk three. All right. Now, when you're asked the question, which is the best tool for fine tuning LLMs, the model would, there would be a retriever model that will actually go into this database of these chunks, right? And it'll do a lookup of these terms. So everyone pretty much uses cosine similarity. You can imagine different things. But it'll do a lookup and it'll retrieve, let's say, I'm putting in random numbers here, but it sort of get these chunks as being relevant here. So four chunks. Now you could further filter and let's say, all right, these are the two relevant ones. And you can send these to the LLM, which can then basically read this info. And it's like answering an open book question. So you can imagine like you're a kid writing a exam, right? And it's a physics exam with this in context. So you ask me about lenses. I'll open my book. I'll go to the index page and I'll look for lenses. All right. Uh, It'll probably be under the chapter of light, probably under lenses. I'll flip to that page. I'll read that and then I'll answer you. So it's like an open book question then for LLMs. So the team collected a large chunk of Wikipedia data set and they actually stored this using different models. Now there's a leaderboard known as MTEB leaderboard, which sort of catalogs what's the best, you know, embedding model. So the team had about 300 combinations of different retrieval, L different retrieval LLM models, and then different Wikipedia dumps. They settled on the following five um, embedding models. These were E5 base V2. E5 large V2, GTE base and large, and BGE large. So they use these to embed their entire data set. And they also did different experiments around when you're doing these embeddings, we want to embed, let's say, just the context, the metadata of the documents, on and so forth. Now, one thing you would always recognize as a Kaggler is these are legendary Kaggles who've actually built incredible products in practice. So they always have this sprinkle of engineering in their solution. I think this was one of those where they implemented like a similarity search that ran on GPUs. I think this was a separate algorithm or separate pipeline that they built for their solution. You can find their inference notebook in the description of this video if you'd like to get into that. So that's for the RAG part. Now we're done with RAG. Let's get into understanding their modeling pipeline. So uh, they'd use the following models for um, their entire pipeline. And it was basically a mix of these models, five of these 7 billion ones and one of Lama 2 13 billion. So it was Lama 2 7 billion, Mistral, X10 and Lama 213 million. Now what they did was if you take a look at this diagram, so they do one forward pass and basically cache the past key value pairs from five models. All right, so now you have like six LLM models, right? Along with the retrieved context that's being fed into these. So what they did was they took the MCQs from the test set. So they take the MCQs from the test set and they flatten into five times the number of questions. And then this is treated as a binary classification problem. So all of these six LLMs are then fine tuned on the entire data set. So basically you have like these six models. Um, let me draw that out for you. Let's just do, let's just assume here 
uh, one could be mistral one would be llama 7 llama 13 and you would have six of these so all of these together would then produce probabilities for all five options right if you remember we had five mcqs now you just do averaging you just average these five probabilities and take an argmax to get the most probable answer and again all of these are of course fine tuned using h2 llm studio uh, check it out it's, it's really great to play around with this is quite interesting uh, from an engineering perspective because llms normally are only used for doing next token prediction or doing question answering here they actually added a dense layer on top and changed it into a binary classification problem so this is this feature is now available in uh, llm studio and you don't have to manually do it you don't have to go inside pytorch uh, and in module and add these layers but you can simply do it using llm studio at the time of this competition i think this approach was quite unique at least compared to other uh, competitors let's talk about their validation approach now um now of course you need to also keep a track of how your model is behaving against the leaderboard so that you can know how much uh, are you improving or not so when they started out they used the 200 examples uh, data set that Kaggle had provided but later on from that huge <laughs> wikipedia dump they set aside 6000 questions to keep a track of their progress this entire approach finally led them to finishing first and during the duration of the competition they led with a nice margin and they retained this so again i would encourage you all to check out their write-up it also has this nice visualization to understand how this modeling pipeline is behaving but just to quickly recap they used six different llm models that were fine-tuned using llm studio all of these gave out probability distribution of the MCQ options, which were then averaged to get answers. They implemented RAG, which sort of helped this, and they actually show that even with a single model, you can get really good performance. And for the RAG pipeline, they used an insanely large chunk of Wikipedia dataset. So that's it for the overview of this solution. Uh, check out the links in the description, and I'll see you in the next video.